Do you know what a rite of passage is? When I met a couple that was offering rites of passage, I was curious. What would that be like? I knew that for indigenous people, it often meant the passage from childhood to adulthood. So at the age of 36, I would mark my transition to adulthood. I would be spending four days and nights in the wilderness by myself with minimal equipment and no food. One day, I took my blanket and walked up a ridge. I found a chair of rock. Imagine an oversized armchair made of granite that overlooked the long valley. Wrapped in my blanket, I spent the day there just being, watching the ravens dance on the wind. There was so much peace in my world. I can tap into that peace at any given time just by remembering that day. Five years later though, I was unable to and actually did not want to tap into that peace. I was deeply grieving, grieving the loss of my dream of being happily married until death do us part. Any given day, I alternated between deep sadness, laying on my bed, sobbing, being an emotional mess and being in my head, stuffing the emotions to get the things done that needed to get done. I wondered how I would deal with being a single mom. Back then, I had no clue what I wanted out of life. I just knew I didn't want the one that I was living. Right now, we all are affected by crisis. The world is changing. This collective rite of passage we are in is marking the transition from the old to the new, which includes dreaming about what the new could be like, not having rites of passage, we're unfamiliar with the process. We have rituals like graduation, marriage, funeral, that without people realizing it, require us being witnessed by our community. I trained to become a rite of passage guide. And today I know that with what I learned back then and the support from fellow guides, I could have created a rite of passage around my divorce, gaining clarity of what it is that I wanted out of life. As I see it, there are many people who hope that somebody, be it a politician or other leader, will step forward and initiate a change out of this crisis. But this collective rite of passage is asking that each one of us finds our own way to move into this new world. In working with rites of passage, I learned that the initiatory challenge deepens the way we see and relate to the world. We gain clarity. Ultimately, we do not undertake a rite of passage just for ourselves. We do it for the community, the collective. There are groups that offer multicultural rites of passage. 
not everybody is able to backpack into a wilderness setting and camp there. Right now, I'm not able to either. And recently, some guides have become creative. Now, you can take the preparation online and we support you energetically during the solo time. In an individual rite of passage, like in a co collective one, it is important to stop doing and start contemplating. Remember that we are part of the earth. Listen to what she says. Speak with her, not to her. The depth and clarity gained during an individual rite of passage contributes to the community, to the collective. To make it through this global transition, we require everybody, adults and youth, to participate. We need to start looking through the lens of connection, connection with each other, independent of age, gender, or race, or any of the other issues that we use to separate ourselves. This way, we begin to move from humanity 1.0 with competition, monoculture, and judgment to humanity 2.0 with collaboration, diversity, and allowance, respect being the basis for all of them. Here is how you can support us globally to move through this collective rite of passage. During the next week, educate yourself about rites of passage. Take 10 to 15 minutes daily. Find out where you can participate in the one. And most importantly, get clear on your most caring vision for your life and as a result also for the world. Together, with intention and commitment, we not only can, but will make it through this collective rite of passage.